Hi there. My name is Vaidi from the Analytics Specialist team here at AWS, and today I will demonstrate the basic workflow for data sharing, a new capability that we're launching for preview at Amazon reInvent 2020. This is the first of a series of videos we'll be creating on this topic, exploring a few different applications and use cases of data sharing, and I strongly encourage you to watch the other videos as well. Before I demo the workflow for data sharing, let me set up the business scenario. The left-hand side is where we are today. We have a central data warehouse cluster that's run by an analytics center of excellence where all our finance and ERP data is ingested and transformed, and we call this cluster the producer cluster. Subsets of data from this producer cluster are, are copied via a nightly ETL feed to multiple business unit owned clusters. One of these clusters is owned by the sales operations team, and we call that the consumer cluster. This team is looking to better understand sales operations and performance data in a timely way, except they're really frustrated by the fact that this data is not live. And whenever there's an ad hoc request that needs fresh data, they need to set up custom pipelines, which adds delays, complexity, and really impedes time to insight. It also causes a fair bit of data duplication, which we all know is never good. And this team wants to move to a future represented on the right-hand side, where data can be shared live, where you can provide instant, high-performant, and granular access to just a relevant subset of data that matters to my sales ops team, all in a way that removes the need to have to copy and move that data around. Ultimately, the hope is that this new setup will improve our ability to act on that data with agility and confidence. Let's now review the workflow and figure out how we can make that happen. I will now demonstrate the basic workflow for data sharing between the analytics COE producer and the sales ops consumers. First, I will log in to the producer cluster as a producer cluster admin and go ahead and create a data share. The data share is essentially a new object that is a unit of sharing and defines a subset of data that you're getting access to. Then I will go ahead and add some objects to that data share. In this case, I'm choosing to expose some tables, but note that these could absolutely have been other objects like views and materialized views and SQL UDFs. Next, I will specify the consumer that these objects should be shared with. In this case, I will go ahead and grant usage on this data share to uh, a particular consumer cluster uh, uniquely identified by this particular namespace. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I can start running some validations. For example, I can run the SVV data shares query to look at every data share object that is associated with this cluster. So in this case, I see that there's one sales share object and it is an outbound share. I can also look at all the objects that are included in the data share called sales share. And again, you see these all being outbound uh, type of objects. Also, I can look at all the consumer clusters that this data share has been shared with. And you see the consumer namespace, which of course uniquely identifies the consumer cluster. Now I can go to the consumer cluster and log in as the consumer cluster admin and do some validations there as well. For example, I can run that same SVV data shares query to look at every data share object that is associated with this consumer cluster. And you can see that the same sales share object is now seen to be associated with the consumer cluster, except it appears as an inbound share. Similarly, I can look at all the objects that are included in the sales share data share. And again, they all appear as inbound objects. Now, what if, I, what if I went back to the producer cluster and made some changes? Would those changes reflect across to the consumer cluster? Let's go ahead and do a couple of tests. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I will go ahead and remove this one product subcategory table from my sales share data share. And I'm expecting this to not show up in the consumer cluster as well. Now in the consumer cluster, know that we ran this SVV data share objects query 
uh, just a couple of seconds back and it did have the product uh, subcategory object in there. Now let me run that same query again and you see that product subcategory is missing. So clearly those changes are in sync. I'm going to go back and undo that change and I will uh, include product subcategory back into the share. Another change I could make is I could say I want to revoke usage on this sales share data share from my consumer cluster. And now if I go and log back into the consumer cluster and I run the SVV data shares query, as expected, I'm going to get an empty set because that data share uh, access to which has been revoked is not available to me anymore. So I'm going to go ahead again and, and undo that change as well. What these observations tell me is that data sharing is live sharing and it's secure. The producer and consumer are in sync. As a producer, I keep control of the data that I'm sharing. And at any point, I can choose to revoke permissions and the consumer clusters will instantly lose access to the data. Now, in order to use these shared objects in a query, I first need to create a local database reference to the shared objects. So let's do that. I can also grant permissions on shared databases and schemas to users and groups in this cluster. And with that, this data is ready for some analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and log back into the consumer cluster as a sales ops analyst. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is to run some of these metadata queries. So uh, immediately you notice that I can now navigate the metadata of the shared data uh, available to me as a data share, uh, just like local data, right? That's the first thing I can do. Second is uh, I can look at all the schemas and tables that have been, sh that have been shared with me via the data share. And that way I know what tables and uh, schemas to be querying. And now let's uh, uh, ask ourselves a couple of questions. So the first question is to look at um, you know, all the total sales for a new helmet. This is an ad hoc request. This, this helmet is a brand new product line uh, and I do not have that data. Now, previously a request like this would have taken weeks as you would have had to move that data around but with data sharing, I could just ask the COE admin to create a share for me. And using this three-part notation, uh, I can simply run this query um, and simply get the answer that I wanted. A second type of scenario could be where I want to look at the product sales by territory when no discount was offered, except these discount tables you see here uh, are entirely locally managed and they're only available in the consumer cluster. They're not available in the producer cluster. However, with data sharing, you're able to effectively query across clusters using this three-part notation. So let me just go ahead and run that. And you see that we are able to get to our answer um, without any fuss. So thank you for listening to this demo and good luck uh, using the feature.